Well, here I am again on another mountaintop reviewing yet another exoskeleton. A technology that I didn't think I'd see in 2025, but apparently everyone is trying to compete in this area of technology. And these guys and this exoskeleton is quite different from the others that we've previously tried. The others are great for hips and thigh movement, this one is also good for hips and thigh movement and lifting your legs up and down. But this does one part of my body, which is a common complaint with many, many, many people, including myself, and that is knees. Because not only is this capable of powering your leg movements, it's capable of supporting your knee whilst you're doing it. So without further ado, let's go take a look at these. This is the Ascenters exoskeleton, and I genuinely wasn't expecting to be back here taking a look at another exoskeleton so soon. But this really is an exciting one because it's estimated that nearly 25% of adults have some form of knee complaint. And if you're nodding in solidarity right now on the other side of the black mirror that you're watching this on, then this episode is for you. But this, the knee exoskeleton, isn't really the product here. The product is actually the belt it's attached to. Now I've revealed to you before that I'm Batman and that Stu from Stu's Reviews is just an act. Well every Batman needs his utility belt and this is as close as possible to an actual real use utility belt that I've ever seen and it's what makes this exoskeleton stand out from the last one that I've tried and the reason that it's so important is that it allows the system to be modular. The legs and the belt are completely separate so that you can tailor the system to meet your personal needs. Now the belt itself clasps together in the middle via an adjustable strap for a particular fit. Now obviously there's an upper and lower limit for this and I was finding that at my size, 6x8 slightly round shape, that it was suitable just on the upper limit. I think it could potentially have allowed slightly wider adjustment if I were to be needy, but I think most people will be fine. Now on the outside of the belt is this beautiful chain link style design which I think is super eye catching but it actually performs an important part of the modular functionality. These links run around the side and to the back, either side of the battery that powers the legs that you attach to it. The belt sits on your hips to take the weight of the battery, and honestly, when wearing it, you can't really feel it. It feels comfortable enough not to be bothered by it. Sort of like hiking rucksacks, bottom belt, except without the rucksack. Now, it's those chain links here that make it modular because here is where you can attach different things. For starters, the controller for the legs can be clipped or unclipped onto here, which is a very nice touch. With the other exoskeleton that I've tried, this was stuck in one position, which made it difficult to reach or to even see what mode you're in, especially if it was under a large parka or other coat, for example. This is a much better system. So if you're wearing something like a big coat or the controller is obstructed by something else like my belly, you can unclip it to see what mode you're in or cycle through the mode using the buttons on top, which I'll come back to. But when you're done having a fiddle, you can clip it straight back onto the belt. And because this belt is entirely modular and all these links are the same, you can essentially click it anywhere you like around the outside of the belt. So you can put it in a position that you find the most comfortable, which is such a simple engineering design, but one that really has a positive impact on the overall usability and personalization of this exoskeleton. But what it also means, is full customizability of the accessories too. I know that Ascentis have a ton of ideas around this and I'd expect to see even more as the product becomes established. But I think planned at launch are things like an Apple Watch mount so you can use a watch to control the legs or see live information such as distance, battery and health, so on and so on. And I think there's also a universal connector plan too and potentially things like a little clip-in bum bag, which I haven't tried, but I'm sure probably work in a very similar way to the controller. It really does make this a personal Batman utility belt to store your 
bat-shaped boomerangs if you wanted, or whatever they're called. But if that's not enough, you can also use regular carabiners kind of clipped through the bottom here to hang pretty much whatever you want from it. It's such a great idea and offers a really unique way in taking the weight of the things that you're carrying and applying that to your belt with the exoskeleton attached. And the exoskeleton element actually attaches the exact same way as the rest of the attachments, hooking on to the outside of the belt with exactly the same mechanism, like that. We're in. It's that quick. It's so simple. Well, once you're hooked on, you then run the cable directly to the battery like this and click that in, and then you are good to go. The exoskeleton element is then powered by your Batman belt, and you're ready to be taken over by an evil penguin looking to steal a few diamonds. Now, the reason I mentioned that the Ascentis exoskeleton as a base product is essentially the belt rather than the actual exoskeleton bit, which is this, is because this isn't the only style of exoskeleton attachment. And this is where something special happens. As I mentioned, you've got the knee exoskeleton part, which sits lower down on your leg and supports your knee joint. But they also do this module here that's more similar to the previous exoskeletons we reviewed and sits higher up and it augments your hip movement instead. I will get onto those in just a second, but I think this modular element is incredible. It lets you tailor your exoskeleton to your own needs, which honestly is a bloody fantastic idea for both the company and the consumer. On the consumer's hand, it means there's a lot more customization in how you use it, letting you get all of the bits you need and excluding the bits that you don't. In effect, cutting costs for you and getting the product tailored to your own needs. On the manufacturer's side, it also reduces costs and waste because they can mass produce the core product, which is the utility belt, which everyone will need to buy, and then they can tailor the other two to match the demand of the consumer. It's very, very clever indeed. It makes perfect sense on all sides of the argument. Now, let's get on to the two modules, starting with the one I've never tried, the K module, which augments your knees. Like I said earlier, knee problems are extremely prevalent, and me growing up and outwards and being six foot eight with at least four miles of travel before I get to the floor, adding to the fact that I was once a hardcore cyclist when I was younger has meant that my knees are not in great shape. I'm not completely useless, of course. Just your average white middle-aged unhealthy beer drinking waste increasing father that probably should lose a bit of weight and get out more but even so i cannot believe how much support the knee exoskeleton gives you with your knee movement like when i originally tried on the exoskeleton of hip base support it was slightly unusual in that using a knee exoskeleton for the first time just felt a bit strange I felt a bit like Forrest Gump hobbling around, and that's because of the resistance it puts on your knee joint and ultimately focuses on forcing your knee joint outwards into a straight leg position, like sculling stew. What this means is you're no longer relying on these muscles to lift your leg up. Instead, it augments it and essentially pulls your knee up and like that, without you having to use as much strength in these set of muscles as you normally would. It makes a massive difference. It really genuinely does. And after half an hour of wearing it, it becomes pretty normal. You get used to the resistance and the support as you start walking as if you've always worn it. It's still not as comfortable as the hip module, and I think that's largely down to do with how many straps you need for it to stay on you whilst working, using three in total on your thigh, upper and lower knee. Now these are all hook and loop material as well, and I found that my thigh is so beefy that I was at the extremities of the sizing, and that, that essentially meant particularly vigorous movement sometimes cause the straps to loosen or even pop open over a period of time, having to stop my hike every so often to readjust. 
Again, I'm six by eight, so I'm not a representative of the experience that most people will have. But as a side note to a sentence, I'd love to see slightly less reliance on hook and loop material and more longer fixed straps to ensure suitability for people like me who are medically classed as giants. The thing is, the hip module has slightly better system of straps, opting for this kind of twist mechanism here, which can adjust the tension, and then this large D-ring that simply wraps around and then hooks onto the other side like... It's kind of hard to do it without having it on, like that. It's a bit more of a robust strap system, and I would have loved to have seen that on the knee brace as well. But straps aside, even being slightly less comfortable for the right individual with weakness in knees or with a desire for more strength in your knees, the additional support it provides is worth its weight in gold and a happy trade to be slightly less comfortable in my opinion. Now the hip module for me, as I mentioned, is still the most comfortable and it performs very similarly to the previous exoskeleton we featured. This sits higher and is designed to essentially, oh god, lift your entire leg up like this to support the whole range of movement through your hip joint here. For me personally, I get a lot more out of this particular module, and although my knees are in a pretty poor state, I can really feel the difference that the hip module makes to hiking activities. It supports that hip movement and essentially pulls your upper leg upwards and then aids it by pushing your leg down, which is especially noticeable when walking up steep slopes. Now, the closest I can liken it to, if you want to know how it feels whilst wearing one, go and stand at the bottom of your stairs and put your leg, or your chosen leg, on perhaps the third, fourth, maybe even fifth step up if you're really tall. Put your hands behind your back and pull yourself up just using your leg and thigh movement you'll find it quite difficult, likely doable, but difficult. To simulate what it feels like with an exoskeleton on, do the exact same thing, but this time place your hand on the same side that you're using your upper leg on the step, and then lean forward into it and put the pressure on your leg. This will give you more support and power to lift yourself up and level yourself up. And that's sort of what it does, offering you a robotic hand on your leg to help support your movement, push you forward and up. And the thing is, you can actually adjust the level of support from a slight help to the top end, which is pretty much takes your legs from under you like the wrong trousers. The controller I mentioned lets you cycle through the modes or increase and decrease the assistance of both of the modules. And I can't stress enough how maximum support on both legs feels. It's absolutely wild. It's almost like you're, you've suddenly gained superpowers or something. But interestingly, being modular, it means that you don't have to use them both at the same time. You can just use one module as a form of asymmetrical support too. I'm not sure if you're supposed to, but centers don't explicitly say you can't. Nor do they say you can. Hmm. But I tried it and it does seem to work. It does feel slightly odd. Maybe it would feel less odd for the right person, but if you can, I'd always recommend using both modules at the same time just to avoid looking like a one leg is possessed or something. Now, being modular it does have another benefit on that note, in that if something breaks, you're not throwing the entire thing away. Let's say you have a nasty fall and you end up damaging just one leg of the device. You could, in theory, buy a single leg replacement unit and swap it out with the broken one if a centist choose to sell singles, that is. And there's one other thing that's on my wish list as well, and that's that I want to be able to use both modules, the hip and the knee module, at the same time. As it stands, the battery will only power two modules at the same time, so the two hips or the two knees, and it would need to power four if it was going to do all of them. Augmenting both the knee and the hip joints at the same time would be a very interesting experience indeed. And they may, at a later date, make an entirely new module that does power your whole leg in one device. So I guess watch this space. You could end up being just like Tom Cruise in The Edge of Tomorrow, or perhaps a, a resident of 62 West Wallaby Street. Now, as an exoskeleton, on the surface, it would seem that it is quite a niche product, a niche industry. But actually, the application range for exoskeletons is tremendous. Of course, you've got the assistance element whilst walking and hiking, which is how I've been using it. 
but you can use it while cycling too and other sports that involve leg movement. But if assistance isn't your cup of tea, Ascensors have been very clever here and added in a functionality that goes beyond assistance. In fact, it goes so far beyond assistance that it's not assistance anymore, it's resistance. Setting it to work in resistance mode does the exact opposite and purposefully tries to restrict and make movement difficult in areas that the module is augmenting. So for example, if you're wearing the hip module, it will push your legs back down and resist you from lifting them up. That might sound absolutely mental, but it's actually a genius mode for athletes and fitness enthusiasts who want to add more resistance to their activities to increase their strength and endurance. So now, even though you're walking to the local shop, that can be a full-on workout with the exoskeleton trying to hold you back. Now, in terms of what it feels like, it feels very much like you're walking through custard when you've got it in resistance mode. So it really does give you a good workout. And it makes this a multifunctional device, not just for those who want the additional support, but for those that want to train harder. Now, previously, exoskeleton technology has been pretty expensive, which I think closes the doors for a lot of people who might just want to experiment with it to find out if it's for them. But here's where the last delight comes in with the Ascentis exoskeleton because it's comparatively much, much cheaper. There's quite a lot of options within the Ascentis range, so I want to focus on the base range in terms of pricing. But right now you can get the base belt and the hip module for £449 and the belt and the knee module for £529. Now to put that into perspective, the previous exoskeleton we tried was over double that price. And it's absolutely wild to see the price of exoskeleton technology already coming down in such a short space of time. But hold your horses, don't be too hasty to head there and click buy. There is a warning that I have to make because the price is for the price on Kickstarter. If this is something you are considering, then all of the usual precautions apply when backing a product through crowdfunding. So make sure you do your diligence and make yourself familiar with all of the risks associated with backing products for pre-launch or prototype stages. I will link below to the Kickstarter Trust and Accountability page so you have the full information about backing products on Kickstarter. But as always, the risk is entirely yours to manage as you see fit. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on this, the prototype version of the Ascentis gear, so my experience may not be representative of the consumer purchase experience and some of the final features and design might end up changing slightly. So just keep that in mind if you are considering backing this product. I will, of course, link below their Kickstarter page so you can check out the Ascentis for yourself and drop a QR code there. We'll put it there for those watching on TV so you can quickly whip it out of your pants, your phone, that is, and then scan that to find out a little bit more. But there is obviously one last warning that I would like to make, and that is that this is not considered a medical device. You have to be physically able to move your legs with this to have any benefit for you. So it's not going to replace a loss of ability. Could it help with medical conditions that impede or affect movement? Quite possibly. But for all legal purposes, and I want to cover my ass here, it can't be classed as a medical device, so it's just another thing to bear in mind. But with all of those said, I've been very, very impressed with the Ascentis exoskeleton. Exoskeleton technology is still very, very early days, and it's evident from this that the technology is evolving very rapidly, not just in innovation, but in price as well. As such, no one really knows the final form of technology that this looks like. There's no standardized design pattern or established set of boundaries that the technology must follow. And that's super exciting because I just don't know what to expect next. But there is one thing for sure, and that's that Ascentis have really shown a unique device here and set the stage for the next evolution of this technology. It's not perfect. I think they could certainly do a little bit more in terms of making it a little bit bigger all around. As mentioned earlier, get rid of some of the reliance on the hook and loop tape. 
But those comments aside, it's so much better having a modular kit that allows you to adjust and change it at your own leisure. So Ascentis absolutely gets a little clap for this product and I'm super excited to see what they do next.